Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stephen Breach coming to you here today as we count down until Monday Night Raw. I know a lot of people out there are watching Backlash, but uh, I'm stuck here at work. I'm not going to be able to see AJ versus uh, Dean Ambrose until after I get off. And honestly, it's probably about the only thing that I'm going to check out tonight. But uh, I always do these Monday Night Raw previews and they're always really fun. So uh, why not just crank out one of these real fast on my break. Um, we're talking about Kevin Owens going up against Roman Reigns. Um, it's already been announced that at the Clash of the Champions, the next upcoming Raw pay-per-view, it's going to be Seth Rollins going up against Kevin Owens. Seth Rollins feels that he was wronged because of Triple H's outside interference. We still don't know why Triple H interfered and took out Seth Rollins. Uh, Triple H was nowhere near Monday Night Raw. I don't know if it's because he was uh, you know, dealing with uh, WWE being over in China or... Um, some sort of uh, business trip or something like that and he just was unavailable to be a part of Raw and it's a storyline that's going to be continued or if it's something that just they had an idea and it's already been dropped but uh, the, the idea on Monday Night Raw last week was that basically Roman Reigns wanted a shot at the Universal Championship and he wants a part of the, uh, of the match at Class of Champions, that being Rollins going up against Kevin Owens. So now they've set up a, a, at the end of Monday Night Raw, Mick Foley came out uh, Foley said basically that next week on Raw, which is going to be tomorrow, we are going to see Kevin Owens going up against Roman Reigns in a non-title match. Um, the stipulation of this match basically is that being that if Roman Reigns is able to beat Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns will be going into Clash of Champions, making it a triple threat as the co-number one contender, um, which sort of makes this a, a wishy-washy sort of uh, situation. I mean, honestly, we saw SummerSlam. SummerSlam had a Roman Reigns match against Rusev. Um, it was what it was. I keep looking at this right here. If anybody wonders what this is, I cut myself shaving. It's, it's not a pimple. It's just this damn shaving uh, cut that I got this morning when I was shaving. I don't know why I was shaving away up here in the first place. If I have a mustache, it's way down here, but it is what it is. I got it. I got it good. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't know if you can do Clash of Champions without Roman Reigns, so it has to make it sort of a an easy picking thing that, that Roman's going to win this match and because of the fact that he beat the champion on Monday Night Raw in the main event you would think that Roman would have a chance to be the um, favorite to win a Clash of the Champions but I think everyone can tell that you know Roman Reigns was supposed to be sort of not really put on the back burner but sort of gone on a uh, rehabilitation tour before Money in the Bank was it Money in the Bank? I'm pretty sure it was Money in the Bank. He was suspended for 30 days. He didn't get to do any of the build-up for the triple threat match. No, that was Battleground. Apologize. Battleground. He didn't get to do any of the publicity. He didn't get to do any matches. No build-up for Battleground for the triple threat of the Shield that we've been waiting for for years. Um, maybe that's why that match wasn't as big as it once was thought of it was going to be. People thought that was going to be a co-headlining main event style match. Ambrose versus Rollins versus Reigns. And it ended up just being the main event of Battleground. I think everybody knows how we feel about Battleground. It's probably about the same way people are going to be feeling about Backlash tonight once it's all done for SmackDown tonight. But, um, you know, um, you know, definitely Roman had the match against Rusev for the United States title at SummerSlam. Supposed to give him sort of a match, but not be in the headlining sort of role to where he can sort of fall back in the pack and then sort of rebuild himself up and pump pump some wins into that brand to the point of when they want to get behind Roman Reigns again. I don't think it's so much that they don't trust him. I think they just realize people don't fucking like this guy. Yeah, it's it's not like Cena. Cena has people like him. Cena has people hate him. It was what it was, but I feel like with Roman Reigns, he's got people that like him, but there's a ton more people that don't like this guy. Enough to not make this guy the number one guy in the company. Um, Finn Balor um, got the, uh, the dynamite push right away, getting pushed on his first night of Monday Night Raw, beating Roman Reigns in the main event. Um, he got to have the promo once it was all done, basically saying that you know Finn was good, but you know that next time he, he fought him, he was going to have his number, um, and we'll have to see you know if we're ever going to see that match down the road. Definitely, Finn Balor is going to come back from his injuries. He's going to be stronger than ever, and hopefully, be in the title hunt, uh, maybe at uh, Extreme Rules or whatever pay per view is going to be after WrestleMania next year. Um, with him not being a part of the Royal Rumble, definitely he's not going to be a part of the title picture main event of WrestleMania unless that. I guess now they can go back to the old way where a SmackDown guy can win the Rumble. He'll go for the SmackDown Championship, and then we'll have, um, you know, just the Raw 
title become you know whoever they want it to be. Sometimes it's the guy that finishes second in the Rumble, or sometimes they find a way to, to make it a rematch or something else, or just make it the hottest match that they can do. Um, I'm picking Ro Roman. I think that's pretty much an easy pick um, for Raw tomorrow to get the win, making it a triple threat. Um, the roster's already so thin as it is. I mean, do we want to really see Roman Reigns versus the Shining Stars or Rising Stars? Whatever their names are. Epical and Primo. Not who they are. Do we want to see that match two-on-one? I mean, that's really the only match I can really think of. And if they're even on Raw, I got no clue. But, um... We'll see. This is going to be a damn good match. It's awesome that Kevin Owens is being in the main event slot. Maybe we'll see the return of Triple H. Um, him coming down, interfering in this match again. But then what do you do with Triple H? He's not going to fight at Clash of the Champions. You just have Roman Reigns do a run-in and sort of that sort of build things up to where he screws them so that he screws them and it's everybody screwing each other and it's a big old orgy fest. I don't know. I'm going to be taking... Uh, Roman to get the win. I think it's pretty easy. We've been watching wrestling for a long time. Triple Threat, Clash of Champions, book it. Alright, as we continue on with the Kevin Owens show for 9-12-16 on our way to the Clash of Champions. Um, they've got four more things listed on the five point preview. Honestly, none of these things are things that are make me care about Monday Night Raw. Um, I don't know. I haven't watched SmackDown. I talked about this in my um, Backlash preview um, where I did predictions, and I honestly said I haven't watched SmackDown since the draft, and I honestly can't remember the last time I watched SmackDown before the draft. Um, but maybe by looking at that, it sort of shows you how stripped down both of these shows are, and maybe they think that this is going to make the product better, but in the long run, for a diehard wrestling fan like me to basically be saying that they're putting out shit called Backlash and Clash of the Champions, and both pay-per-views are going to have one match apiece that I care about. There's only one match that I want to see, then maybe they're not going in the right direction. Um, last week, they announced the Sasha Banks versus Charlotte match. Um, basically, Sasha Banks came out and acted like she was going to retire, like she was Daniel Bryan, basically saying that her body had taken too much of a beating and that she was not going to be able to continue in WWE, only to, surprise, surprise, challenge Charlotte when it looked like Bailey was going to be the new number one contender. Maybe that's one of the reasons why Paige had uh, put in her notice, uh, basically saying that she was quitting WWE, another big story that broke this week. But um, honestly, in my opinion, um, this week, hopefully we'll see a payoff from this. I know that both of these girls are playing baby faces right now, but it easily be able to, to, to shed a shed of gray in Sasha Banks' character and maybe put it in a really cool role. if. You play off of Sasha versus Bailey. One of the big, uh, you know, storylines of the Breaking Ground show, as well as the biggest thing from NXT last year um, around SummerSlam time, was Bailey versus Sasha Banks, um, where basically Bailey was able to beat Sasha. Um, I believe that was at the um, uh, Takeover Brooklyn show, and then have the rematch down in Orlando at the next Takeover special, where it was Iron Man match. I was supposed to be. Iron Woman, but then they said that that was sort of degrading to women to put that in there. So just call, call it an Iron Man so you just keep everything in wrestling the same. Um, you know, play off of that, that Sasha and Bailey have a history. They are best friends in real life, um, but, you know, on the show, these two are never going to be able to mix together, even if they are both baby faces at the same time. Basically, have Bailey say that Sasha Banks is cutting in line, maybe challenge her to a match. It doesn't hurt Bailey to lose a match to Sasha Banks, and it makes Sasha look even stronger in the long run. Plus, you can have Charlotte and Dana Brooke cheering the baby faces on, beat the hell out of each other to see who the true number one contender is going to be. But they probably won't do it, but it is what it is. Uh, match five of the best of seven from Char. Uh, <laughs> Shoot, Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, right now, it's it's three to one. Um, Cesaro finally was able to pull out a big win on the European tour. I believe it was a big match in London at the O2 Arena. But um, I I don't know. We all know this is going to go seven. It's going to be uh, match number seven at Clash of Champions. Um, and Cesaro will probably get the come from behind victory and he'll look like really strong for losing three matches and then winning the next four. Um, I don't know. Anytime you lose three matches in a row, you're going to look pretty weak in my book. They should have gone back and forth, back and forth, even if it comes off a little bit. Um, you know, you can see it coming. Uh, but you can still get the best of seven with, you know, Sheamus having a one match lead, then tying it up, having a one match.
Caps lead, tying it up and getting there and, and making it seem like it's going to be a lot more. Of course, Cesaro has the injury angle that they're going to play off of, but uh, more than likely, pick Cesaro to get the win. Last week, we had one of the most regrettable segments of all time, and I didn't even see it. I still haven't watched it. It was so bad um, that I heard reviews and I read tweets about this being one of the things that involved in wrestling that makes you sort of regret being a wrestling fan, that I stayed so far away from it. The New Day has already soured in my mind. I've already turned on these guys a little bit. Still love Big E, still love Xavier Woods. Sort of wishy-washy. In the last year, I've sort of grown on Kofi Kingston a little bit, but, you know, as a group, I think they've done everything there is to do, and it's soon one of these guys needs to break out of this and beat the hell out of everybody, hopefully being Biggie Langston. But the club are two guys, Luke Gallows, Machine Gun, Carl Anderson. I love these guys. I want the best for them. That segment sucked. The doctor segments uh, leading into SummerSlam, they weren't that great either. Um, this should be just a badass tag team going out like demolition, powers of pain, just beating the fuck out of people, kicking asses, taking names, and hopefully getting those WWE tag team titles. So we'll see what goes on with this, but they need to bring some life into the tag team division on Monday Night Raw, American Alpha, the Usos, Hype Bros, even Heath Slater and Rhino uh, get a tag team division on SmackDown, looking really, really good. And you got two of the best teams in WWE. Um, they're not doing anything with him. Um, Bo Dallas came out of nowhere, broke out of the social outcast. He had a match last week. This is after his big story of his arrest in Mexico. Um, I guess there's going to be no repercussions from him getting kicked off of that plane. Um, they just, wrestlers do what wrestlers are going to do, and he's living the lifestyle of the Rotundos. But Bo Dallas got a big win. Um, they're making him look like a badass. They still make him look like an idiot. So are we going to believe in Bo Dallas? Bo Dallas is going to be Bo Dallas for as long as WWE wants to believe in Bo Dallas. My guess, two weeks. He gets another win on Raw, and he gets his ass kicked next week. So, we'll see what goes down. This is going to be the 9-12-16 edition of Monday Night Raw, counting down to the Clash of Champions. The Kevin Owens Show, big main event. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. Roman wins. He's in the triple threat. Clash of Champions.